morning, everybody, all across Facebook land. Uh, today is January 14th. Welcome to our COVID-19 Town Hall update, uh, where every Tuesday and Thursday, we, along with our esteemed cast of health professionals and uh, um, um, more importantly, our president, Jonathan Nez, give uh, timely updates and uh, give you the information that's needed to help guide you through this COVID-19 pandemic. So today is no different. Uh, we will be receiving uh, updates about the vaccines and about uh, the latest surging going out. And uh, as we always do, we open up with a word of prayer. So uh, uh, please, uh, if you would, uh, oblige me. Ahiat Dian God. Bohonihi God, we give you praise this morning, Lord, for opening our eyes, Lord. Another day of life, Father, for you bring you breathe the breath of life into our lungs. And you bring life to our bodies, Lord, and uh, revive us. Your tender mercies are made new every morning. Lord, we thank you that we have a loving God and a creator that uh, wishes the best for us, Lord. And uh, we pray that for all the people across the land, Lord, this morning. <clears throat> we pray for unity and, and wisdom, Lord, Father. Yeah, the wisdom for, to uh, help us uh, 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 battle this pandemic, Lord, to uh, c come to a solution to this uh, virus, Father. Lord, we all work like it depends on us, but we'll pray and press into you like it depends on you, which it does. So, Father God, we thank you again. We ask that all those that are on this call be blessed, Father. <clears throat> be with them, protect them and their families, Lord. One by one, Father, you know each one. Lord, be with the leadership, Lord, of the Navajo Nation. Be with us in unity and in the spirit of love and grace and, and mercy, Lord Father, that we can come together and uh, be that people, Lord, that would make the tough decisions, Lord, that would uh, be the example, Lord, to lead a nation. <clears throat> we thank you again. We ask for blessing upon this meeting. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, today, uh, up Jan January 14th, we do have um, uh, updates from all. Uh, but first and foremost, let us hear from our great leader, uh, the president of the Navajo Nation, Jonathan Nez, who's out, I believe. Uh, didn't get the word. I'm not sure if he's out at a vaccination site, but uh, we appreciate his leadership, his exemplary leadership as we have uh, navigated through this pandemic. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Navajo Nation, uh, Jonathan Nez. Sir, take it away. difficulties, but the president is about the, the um, uh, business over there at the vaccine uh, uh, station, I guess. I'm not sure where. I didn't get the update uh, exactly where he's at, but recently he's been in Thibu at the vaccination drive for our elders. So, you know, our elders over 65 are uh, uh, priority. And so the, 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 the whole goal or initiative behind that is to preserve those that have a full knowledge of our language, our culture, and our ways, and our traditions. Uh, and uh, also, they're one of the, the targeted group, uh, most vulnerable population in this fight against COVID-19. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not sure about the, the data that supports that, but I know it's there. I've seen it, and uh, uh, we do appreciate uh, that uh, ability to uh, push this vaccine out to our elders and our front line and our health professionals. Those are the priorities. After all of those have been uh, have received their vaccines, then it's to the general population. Uh, next up would be the uh, frontline uh, grocery store workers, the hardware store workers, the uh, convenience store uh, workers, and uh, the like. Uh, and so we prepare all of the frontline people for these are where our people still need food, um, products, hardware, services, and we still need to fortify that contingent out there and protect them with this uh, vaccine. So we appreciate you all for chiming in again on our July 
January 14th uh, town hall update here. Uh, president is out in the field. He's out at a vaccine uh, uh, tri um, vaccine uh, station uh, where they're a drive. So uh, until we get him to to uh, hook up online here, I will go ahead and um, <clears throat> uh, get started on my update. I always give numbers and I try not to be redundant, but I guess when you're the first one here, you uh, kind of have rule and reign here to, to pass out information. But uh, again, the uh, president and uh, vice president here have been doing this early since early on in this pandemic. Uh, the um, um, March March 13th, I believe, is when, when we had started all of this here, as you remember, shut down the government uh, uh, held our employee, employees at home and uh, reserved uh, those and mitigated the uh, exposure of this virus here for the, the masses all across the Nata. And so the latest news from Arizona, which is still uh, undergoing a surge of the virus here, which we did hear about early on, right? In, in the fall time, uh, we heard about a, a uh, prospective surge uh, was what the health professionals predicted could happen that coupled with a flu season coming upon us, but we haven't heard so much of the flu, but uh, this virus has uh, taken um, uh, precedence here uh, during this uh, winter time. So uh, Arizona, latest numbers, uh, 641,673, um, 641,729 total positive cases since uh, March with uh, 14,188 new cases as of uh, Tuesday. Uh, total deaths, 10,673, with uh, 526 new deaths to report here. So <clears throat> not looking good. As you know, that is the density, uh, heavy density of our population within the state of Arizona, Maricopa County and Pinell County, Pima County, all those down there. Uh, 5,629 new cases as of uh, yesterday. So. Uh, we appreciate uh, these numbers coming in. Apache County doing a drill down within the state of Arizona in our portion, Northeast Arizona. 8,376 uh, positive cases total with 21 new cases uh, there with two new deaths to report given that total to 262 total uh, deaths here reported in Apache County. Navajo County, 12,894. Uh, new cases um, and also, um, uh, sorry, my bad, uh, 12,894 total positive cases <clears throat> with um, 40 new cases here of uh, those testing positive with one new death to report, bringing that total to 378. So uh, we're getting um, a lot of uh, uh, new data here. Um, Coconino County, <clears throat> 13,192 total cases since uh, March, with um, 103 new cases as of yesterday, uh, with three additional deaths, bringing that total to 240. So we uh, appreciate um, uh, all of these new numbers here trickling down to us here. New Mexico. New Mexico has, um, as of yesterday, uh, they have reported uh, their first uh, case of that B117 coronavirus variant. Uh, uh, somebody had traveled to uh, the UK um, and uh, uh, brought, I believe, was exposed and brought it home <clears throat> uh, to New Mexico. Didn't say where it was, but um, there's no evidence that uh, the variant has an impact on the severity of COVID-19 cases, uh, nor no current vaccine effectiveness as per, per the CDC. So, um, 157,974 total cases in New Mexico, with um, yesterday reporting 893 new cases with 30 new deaths, uh, bringing that total to the statewide 2,794. <clears throat> San Juan County doing a drill down within the state in our northwest corner of Navajo and our uh, northeast corner of the Navajo Nation. Uh, 11,664 total cases since March with 88 new cases. Uh, we have uh, no new deaths to report, but uh, I believe that was uh, uh, not checking in there. So no, um, those are unknown. Uh, Gallup McKinley County, 10,631 with uh, 62 new cases. So let's continue to mask up out there and maintain social distancing. Those us who travel to our border towns or to the metropolitan areas. It's still uh, out there. 
Utah bringing out our last uh, state here that uh, borders the Navajo Nation. Uh, 314,817 total cases since March with um, uh, 1,400 new cases to report with uh, 27 new deaths, bringing their total to 1,396 total deaths to uh, report in Utah. <clears throat> More uh, directly to Navajo, southeastern Utah, uh, 1,594 total positive cases since March with 35 total deaths there. So um, the new cases was uh, unreported here in, in my, my data. So, but um, we um, uh, appreciate all of our health professionals uh, giving us this data, our epi team, epidemiologists all around, uh, and uh, the contact tracers, all those doing all of the work that uh, they need to do and uh, they bring it down to us. So, uh, but we appreciate that. Uh, if you remember last uh, Tuesday, I talked about 2020, which most of you all want to forget about, but those that know that those that are uh, trained by trial and trip temptation, it, it's, it uh, brings about um, a, a, a maturity. It brings about a, 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 a certain level of wisdom. Um, uh, also, uh, you know, in the in the uh, the natural, <clears throat> we talked about the crucible of uh, what we've learned going through a test. Uh, this crucible. What did it teach us? How did we uh, get affected by it? How did we come out and then exit this pandemic? How will we exit this pandemic? Well, leadership here is uh, certainly um, uh, working on the uh, economic recovery. I believe we can open up and recover safely. Uh, we are advocating for our businesses, all of them, even the non-essentials, which have been closed since March, to be able to open up seven days a week, um, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Uh, and merely for the fact that um, 10 months into this pandemic, I believe all of those uh, public health emergency orders have served a great purpose, I believe. We did save lives. I believe that um, through 10 months that our retailers and, and even the customers that shop and go out to procure their goods and services uh, know how to uh, be vigilant, know how to protect themselves. Um, but in 10, 10 months, I believe, uh, as a, again, experience uh, uh, as, as a retailer, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, um, uh, that there's an uh, uh, there's a reckoning that too, as leadership always has uh, the tension to deal with when to open, how to open, and and you know, is it too uh, soon? Is it not, you know, um, soon enough? Uh, we have a lot of our families, our own Navajo people, are struggling. Those that operated food stands and uh, uh, sold in the flea markets to raise money for you know their families to pay the bills. Uh, some have lost vehicles. Some have lost. Uh, property and uh, our people are struggling all across the land and so uh, we are all consumers right um, we just I think the majority we, we we consume elsewhere we go to the border towns um, and the metropolitan areas uh, great travel distances and potentially get exposed to a virus out there um, and bring it back home so if we have to consume which we do we have to buy groceries we have to buy you know hay and feed and lumber and building material we have to do all these things and again we go out let's do it on our own, within our own borders let's maintain you know one person per vehicle going out to shop to buy these uh, uh, groceries and all the needed essential items to that the ability to open up our, our non-essential businesses to where people can start uh, uh, making some money, paying their bills, making ends meet, you know, uh, providing hope uh, and opportunity. Um, in 10 months, the public health orders, I believe, have a diminishing return effect. Um, and that's just speaking largely to the economic um, <clears throat>
essentials and the non-essentials to be open here on Navajo. Stay home, sit tight, create our own bubble here on Navajo, buy Navajo, buy local, buy your goods and services here. Don't travel abroad. Let, let's let's uh, uh, create our own bubble here. Let's stay home. And that additional money, the financial resources from the CARES relief funds that have hit your bank accounts. I, I know it's tempting to go travel to do and, and normalize things in your life, but we still have the great need to clamp down and to uh, remain vigilant here. So we wish to limit travel. Please don't go out. You have new monies in your bank account. It was the first of the month. You have the general assistance and your social security and pensions. Everybody wants to go travel. Let's stay home by Navajo, by local. So this is your vice president. I've always said that. Uh, I just have a bigger platform in which to say it now. And this campaign is showing dividends. It, it'll be providing opportunity for our children and our children's children. Believe me, I think maybe it takes a, you got to have some faith, right? But uh, that that's really the best uh, 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 solution for some of our economic problems. So when we do, will create more opportunities for our entrepreneurs and those that wish to go into business. So again, uh, uh, we appreciate you. We're praying for you all across the nation. Um, our president, Jonathan Nez, is out at uh, a uh, vaccine um, <clears throat> um, locale somewhere to, I'm not sure, he'll give you the updates, but um, I believe he is waiting, standing in queue. Uh, Mr. President, are you are you ready to? Thumbs up. Hey, there he is. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Navajo Nation, Jonathan Nez. Sir, take it away. All right. Thank you, Vice President, for the prayer. Thank you for the update. We're here in uh, Fort Defiance, Arizona, <clears throat> at the Teotsoy Medical Center. As you can see behind me, the awesome team of TMC and their partners doing a uh, COVID-19 vaccination drive. They have over... 500 doses that are available here for uh, 65 years and older, as well as high-risk patients. Uh, the uh, registration is at the Wellness Center, which is just adjacent to uh, the big parking lot. So we're right in front of the uh, Teotoy Medical Center in the big parking lot. You can see people that are coming in, driving up. They're getting their shots, their first dose of uh, Pfizer or Moderna. And I think we're doing Moderna, is it? You guys know? Pfizer. Oh, Pfizer, they're doing Pfizer. I think the reason why they're doing Pfizer here is that they have the freezer just right next door. They could be able to keep it cold, cold. I think the Moderna ones are being used a little bit more for those that have to get their vaccination at their homes way out in the rural parts of the Navajo Nation. So we uh, thank the uh, Teotoy Medical Center team for doing an outstanding job they have it they have this operation perfect people are coming in registering and uh they are uh doing an outstanding job so in terms of the vaccination let me give you an update this is as of uh january 12th at uh 10 p.m so january 12th was uh tuesday uh, uh, so this these numbers are changing as we're speaking as you can see people are getting doses now uh 26,455 doses have come to the navajo nation 26,455 of those that we received that the service uh units received 20,398 have been given they have those shots were given to our Navajo citizens. So that's an overwhelming 77% of what was given to the Navajo Nation that are going into the arms of our uh, first responders, our, our hospital workers, uh, our 1A category. Now we're in 1B, 65 years and over, and high-risk patients. So this helps us uh, advocate to bring in uh, additional doses. As you may seen in the news, some states, some uh, healthcare facilities are not as high as 77%, maybe they're under 30, 40%. So we're doing a, a good job and I wanna say thank you to the team that's gonna be doing the presentation, Dr. Jill Jam, uh, Indian Health Services, uh, 
and uh, also uh, John Hopkins, many partners coming together uh, to, to make this happen. There is light at the end of the tunnel, ladies and gentlemen, and there has been big interest. You know, even though there's been some uh, unanswered questions about, about the vaccine, and we're going to be uh, talking about that today. That's why we have Dr. Laura Hammett from John Hopkins uh, Center for American Indian Health on with her team and Dr. Jill Jim, the Indian Health Services. We're going to focus today on the vaccination, the new variant, right? It was discovered that the new variant now is in New Mexico. And we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to also talk about those questions that you have about the vaccine. What's in the vaccine? I know there's a lot of misinformation out there from the public saying, you know, it's going to change your DNA. It's got uh, animal products or human uh, cells in it. You know, those types of questions we want to answer just to let you know. And we've been doing this uh, almost every town hall meeting. And, uh, you know, for me uh, and some of the leaders of uh, the council and IHS, we took the vaccine New Year's Eve. Once all the healthcare uh, workers got their vaccination, as we were transitioning to 1B, the reason why we did that was we want people to have confidence and to trust this vaccine. We got hit hard here on the Navajo Nation, and we just want to let everybody know it's okay to take the vaccine. My reaction to the vaccine, the next day, my arm was a little sore. I kept running. I kept doing my exercise. It didn't affect that. Uh, the day that I got my, uh, got my shot, I had a little headache in the evening. Uh, I don't know if it was because of the shot but, or just because of all the excitement of the day. But uh, just, just to be uh, transparent with everyone. Other than that, no other uh, uh, effect or adverse reaction to the shot. So uh, some of the elders uh, gave us consent today to take their pictures uh, here to getting their shot. And uh, they're happy to get their shot. And, you know, they're, they're just thankful to the team for, ha for all of us leadership advocating to get these vaccines. Now, keep in mind that Overall, throughout the country, there's a limited amount of vaccines. So we let's not get our hopes too high, but we are getting these vaccines that we're receiving out to our Navajo people. So, medical center in St. Michael's, the A. Uh, I in das Tago, Pompa, that says, Erosina, Ehot, Nahabi, Rahoshe, Kuan, Hahito, Askado, Adi, Kun, Seato Medical Center, the Adi, Tao, Nade, Leto, the Nebekea for Kao, a hot out, Deet out, Ndaho, a hot, DJ, Yatunesh, it's Ispa, Yaja, Zel, Insa, Aja, A, Yamasan, Yachin, Nella. Nasta as Lengi dog, the Hikani in Nazel in the Bada Hyanja, egg at Bada at Seshi do the teacher. So D hot on late Nebiki of a cow hot out a day later hot out, the Nanishitish, eh? 
so sada atato neya chain le thunne she ji cash ido zel in sa aj a chosh eh akon den le tre nan shojo na zel in sa aj kon de shat ta do ne sa ash kon ni shik eno tini di zel in chadash inigi zel in en hit chart be da haloni e bich to kha ash kon de akhat a e jo be hazen do le bini nagi na kigoshi na kha da tse to le di tonne she jin kha o tsa a de na na go e a a jin na di a na kigi ni kha tse gi e a jin kha hallo do le e bini nai ko ta e ya a bi ki da de ti do ba da ho ni ashi ke ro shin ne so e on his bells and do le to to la da ya di ze gi bini nagi in le washington den hi che kon da yi a kon da asho kon da kan da ni se gi ze in dan den gi ya di ta bon na da ho a ho a ti so hi che kon da ne gi ko do ni ke ni ne ba da se ti ke ro shin ne in his bells and do le bin ya ko do han ni che ko da il ne to le aro la shi na de ki ya da shi e ni ke ni ne yin da ti che ro sha do ti ta bin na gi e ya di sa ji ke ni hit na da ni ya a isi bis tra aro ti ti sta ya ya na ti do de sa o ti go da 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 no a e ti ji e bin ya ho a do de ni na de ki ti da hallo e ko do zel in da ni ge e ko do a han ni ji ko de le to de ti ze gi aro ti ro sa na ni ha ni ge ya ko do sa na 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 ni ha no ba da han ne e to shi jo ba da ha do na ti ti shi ke ro shi ne oh she da ni ge de ni do de ta ki jil jim here la ko na kan sen zo do ko a ats ko ko a pisin de ni shi ge a ko ta e a jin ko pisin sa han ta le ho ko ta ka yin han ne ni ge ko de ni ko na shi a da ta ni ni jin ge a ro ni shi na ta ni ni jin ge in de washington go a ro ko ji do a ho zo ha o zo de a ro ko ji do yo to ha o zo so le ha o zo ji na ta ni bi ji ye ti ke Dio ta ho e do dio ta ni na ni sidei e ta bi di no di ko ze to a la ni ji ko da de ko da do si sta de da di no a sha ni ji ko da li a shi ro shi ne e shi ro ni ji spells and all that dice so ko so shi ni ji ha si to le ti ne ke ji i just wanted to end by saying thank you for the hard work that all the service unit areas are doing It's over 77% of the doses that have come to the Navajo Nation are in the arms of our Navajo people. Good job. I know that there's going to be a lot of questions. There's always complaints about somebody probably not smiling to an elderly or somebody that's getting a shot or somebody got turned away. You know, we we all need to stay diligent. We also need to recognize that not everybody is going to get a vaccination shot but we are trying to bring confidence back to the healthcare system here on Navajo they are doing an outstanding job we just ask for your patience and your understanding for our staff here throughout the Navajo nation and yes we will get through this we are all in this together continue to wear your mask even though people are getting vaccinated If you get a shot that doesn't mean you can throw away your mask. You got to continue to wear your mask. You got to continue to social distance, wash your hands, stay at home. We're still uh, a long way to getting back to normal, but this is a start. Thank you to the prayers. God has answered our prayers uh by getting us some vaccinations and daily prayers have helped uh keep everybody safe, especially the frontline workers. So thank you so much. I'm going to turn the time over. Is Dr. Jim in there? Okay. To Dr. Jill Jim, our executive director for Department of Health, who is doing an awesome job facilitating these discussions, and also the XCOC, the UCG, Indian Health Service. There are so many partners. Please recognize there are so many partners daily, two, three meetings a day, so that we can. uh take care of our citizens here on the Navajo Nation please recognize that there is work happening behind the scenes 
on a daily basis so that we can keep our people safe and save lives. I know I didn't uh, give you an update on the numbers. If you're on social media, of course you are. Check out our last evening's press release. It gives you an updated number. Today we're going to focus on the new variant. And we're also going to talk about the vaccine. What's in the vaccine? Those frequently asked questions. And also this vaccination events that are happening clear across the Navajo Nation. Thank you so much. God bless you. And we will overcome COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen, with your help. And God bless the great Navajo Nation. Dr. Jill Jim, turn it over to you. Oh, President Vice President um, don the engine look on the shant hachini bushes chin do a shane does a che do zatlana e dash nala adona dis on the ay sin shato it's east bahi and jabik a dinch in do di jinko e di the cosin tagi nast e da o it's easel bed the do kashi um the care do e ko a di New Mexico Department of Health Doctor Edwards Hadod Adobe Kedo A um Captain Johnson with the Navajo Area Office. Um, the COVID vaccine, Ben. I just I just want to um, share a web page. Ache be lagana de. I just so. Let me go ahead and share my screen here, and I just want to um, inform everyone we do have a Department of Health web page um, with the vaccine information um, on the Navajo Department of Health. Um, you'll see a COVID-19, and this is the information that we try to update every day. As you know, we have a user population, which we call in um, Indian Health Service terms, or individuals that utilize the Indian health care system and have a chart and have visited um, an IACSIS or a tribal health organization facility in the last um, three years or so. So there are numbers out there and our denominator, like for Navajo Nation, I would say is around 180,000 or, um, and it fluctuates depending on if we're using service unit um, denominators, meaning that individuals that live in Winslow service unit, um, NACA, we have Sacred Peaks, we have Gallup, those are not technically on the Navajo Nation, but we will be counting everybody. So if you think of uh, maybe a need of over 200,000 vaccines or more, we don't, um, we have not received um, enough. So what distributed means, what um, distributed to the health facilities through the CDC and the federal government, these are doses for Moderna and um, Pfizer as well. So just know that if you're looking at which population, of course, there isn't that many uh, vaccines, we doses that we receive and we've administered around 19,000. And so we're left um, far less than the 26,000. So um, there isn't enough vaccines, but we need to get them out and we need to get them out to individuals that need it. In this report, you'll have a disclaimer that doesn't include you to Navajo Health System, to Hajile, Alamo, and Rayma facilities. We're still gathering information from them. Also, in the phase one or phase two and phase three, um, there's a large phase um, 1B that we're still in right now. And those are high risk patients and those older than 65. So um, I was reading some of the comments. So um, just to think about these drive throughs, it is our elder campaign week. So if you are Masana or you're Nali Issa, you're Nali Iski or um, and they if they haven't get a shot at the bot you can get in line and help them um, to get vaccinated. So that's why there was the push this week for the elder campaigns because they're most at risk. And these ACIP guidelines support who um, would need a vaccine and the healthcare um, personnel. Long-term care facilities are a congregate setting, so we definitely needed to get vaccines out there so we can decrease um, any um, deaths related to COVID-19. Um, so I just want to encourage everyone, if you're getting in line, um, please um, encourage your elders, the elders that are in the community to get vaccinated. 
and especially the nearest health facility that they live in as well. We don't want to cause commotion by um, moving and across the Navajo Nation just to get vaccinated. So make sure you um, go to an area where you do have a chart is what we're encouraging everyone to do as well. And then these other priorities will eventually reach um, the remaining population, but everyone should be um, almost served in 1B, but it's really dependent on vaccine availability, as I mentioned, um, what is available and also continue to take precautions. So this is just a good um, information for everyone. So please take that into consideration when you're out um, getting information about the vaccine. Although I just want to do some general um, messaging regarding the um, making sure we do the daily prevention measures, which is wearing a mask um, indoors and outdoors. And one thing that we want to emphasize is to wear your mask when you're visiting if in, with individuals outside your household. Maintain um, physical distancing wherever you're at, at work, um, in grocery store, at the post office, at home, when these people are visiting, even though we don't, we discourage that, but if people do want to drop off things, I mean, just encourage them that they um, maintain their distance and also continue to wash hands with soap and water, especially after if you come home from doing your errands or any other trips as well, and even at work and following the 22nd rule on that, and also just cleaning high touch surface areas. Um, these are possibly your keys, your phone, your door handles, your refrigerator handles, remote controls, um, your phone at work, or either your own cell phone, just to make sure you disinfect regularly. And also properly wash your hand as well. Uh, make sure that you uh, wet your hands completely and also apply, apply enough soap, rub your hands together, and also making sure that you are cleaning in between your hands, on um, your palms, on top of your hand, your thumb, and all of those areas is recommended and also making sure you rinse and dry properly. Also continue to be vigilant on what the recommendations are when you're waiting for test results because you're not really sure if you're positive or not. And when you do decide to get tested, it's because you either have been in a close exposure with someone um, that could be um, positive or that has informed you that they are um, possibly positive. Or, and so those are just the precautions. And especially if you have symptoms um, and if you don't have symptoms, you should not go to work, school or anywhere publicly for example, grocery shopping or doing other things. And that's why we recommend that you have some sort of emergency plan when you really need to complete your um, your 14 day quarantine. If you are um, still waiting um, and monitoring yourself, if you've been in close contact. And also at home, if you do have symptoms, make sure you find a separate room or a separate bathroom to use. Can you continue to wear a cloth mask uh, when you're at home and avoid sharing items, also clean and disinfect all areas regularly. Mm -hmm. And also let others know that you have been, um, you possibly might be positive and you're experiencing symptoms. So just as a reminder to everyone um, out there that take the precautions that you need in order to stop the transmission. And, and that really starts with us and understanding our um, ways of trying to um, just stay home and not go out in public when we feel like um, you could be at risk of transmitting. Um, there is Jane here, and I always like to show this. And even though holiday parties are out, you never know. I mean, we were we discourage everyone to not do any gathering, um, any um, gathering of any sort. We did, um, we do cluster reporting here with our epidemiology center. Um, one incident that our recent cluster in one of the communities, there was a wedding that occurred, not on the reservation, but off the reservation, but with many people leaving the reservation to go to this wedding off the reservation and that created a cluster. So just know that, um, let's just say Jane went to this wedding, right? Was exposed at a wedding on a holiday party. Jane decides to, um, three days later, finally was, um, she learns that she was exposed and self-isolates at home after the wedding. Someone tells her that um, someone was positive at the wedding. 
And so she self isolates, but then tests the next day, but tests is negative. And it's all about、um, when you develop actual symptoms. So she thinks she's fine. So she、um, tests, she tests is negative、um, on the sixth day. The results come back in. 48 hours later, and then on day eight, she's like, Well, I'm negative. I'm going to go ahead and continue to visit with people, go, continue to shop,、um, continue to visit family members, and also has at that time exposed 10 people, even though she's asymptomatic. And then on the 10th day, she develops symptoms and she gets tested again, and now she's positive. So、uh, just as a reminder to every,、um, everyone、um, to take all these precautions, especially when you Um, are notified and contact tracers、um, do notify you and please cooperate with them because they're trying to mitigate the、um, trans, reduce the transmission by informing people that were potentially close contacts. And so、um, there is also a definition for close contacts. You could have w e n t to the party, but you dropped off something, you weren't in contact with anybody, and you left. And you kept your physical distancing, you kept your mask on. And, but Jane here at the party might have、um, not worn her mask. She、um, might have、um, been in three feet or less and might have been at the wedding for a whole day in an enclosed space. So that really increases the risk for、um, COVID, especially if those are all factors when people are not taking precautions. So there's always different scenarios, but this is just one example. Also, to continue to pr- protect yourself and others in the workplace. and It's always very important not to come to work sick. And I think that when that is one thing, it doesn't matter if you work for the Navajo Nation or if you work for a food establishment or a school,、um, wherever your place of business is, you really need to protect others and yourself. And that, re- and that first step is if you feel like you have symptoms, you really need to stay home and then、um, not questioning if it's, oh, I thought it was the flu or I thought it was some- something else. So,、um, If you are in the general public or if you're an employee of a company where there is an exposure, there are several ways to report this. And on the Navajo Department of Health, we have a report exposure button to make sure that you report this exposure so we can ensure that the business is properly、um, addressing the exposure or the cluster that could evolve or either preventing other exposures. So, just to let everyone know. And also, the vaccine is here, as we mentioned. So, please be patient. As we continue to receive vaccines,、um, get it to thousands across the Navajo Nation will be a challenging process. We encourage everyone to be patient as healthcare workers, first responders, elders, high risk patients, spiritual leaders, and essential workers receive the vaccine before the general population. Remember, it's still important to continue, continue to wear a mask, maintain six feet distance from others, washing your hands, and avoiding unnecessary travel as well. And this is the phase 1A process, the 1B process as well. Continue to do that. And also understand that, that we are concentrating on high risk patients, first responders.、Um, there is flexibility because some hospitals and clinics might be different. If you're getting a vaccine at a clinic, they might be further down the list. So that's where you see variability. But this week, we know that we are concentrating on. Those that are 65 and older. And so, the, I want to just let everyone know that the safest place is at home and to continue to stop the spread by staying at, at home as much as you can. We are still in a shelter in place and we have two additional weekend lockdowns. So, please prepare for your essential needs before the end of the week to ensure that you, we reduce any movement on the Navajo Nation. And those are some of our continued. Mitigation strategies. So,、um, I just want to thank all the listeners, and I'm going to go ahead and、um, hand my time over to Dr. Michael Edwards, and he's with the New Mexico Department of Health. And、um, we wanted to learn more about the variant strand, the new variant strand, and just provide us information and, and also any precautions that you recommend as well.、Um, Dr. Edwards, you can unmute yourself, and if you want、um, the video, you might not have a video op- option, but I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jim.、Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk、uh, to you all for a few minutes.、Um, yes,、yeah, so earlier this week,、uh, my laboratory,、uh, New Mexico Department of Health Scientific Laboratory, 
uh, was able to identify and confirm a uh, B117 variant strain. That's the, the strain that's uh, been associated with um, with England, and uh, so we we do have. A case in New Mexico as was reported yesterday, um, and also as was reported, uh, this was associated with travel. This uh, it's, it's not believed that uh, this individual picked up this strain in New Mexico, and as far as um, we can tell, there is no associated contacts uh, within the state. Uh, so I, I hope that gives all of you a little bit of. Uh, uh, comfort. Uh, that being said, uh, you know I, I think we can expect that they'll continue. We will continue to see additional uh, of these variant strains uh, pop up. Uh, it, it is important to note that uh, we, we've seen uh, lots of different strains throughout the course of the pandemic. Uh, the B117 strain is one of many. So, uh, you know, all, what this is, is the virus mutates, and uh, in most cases, it really doesn't matter. That's why there hasn't been much discussion over uh, the past 10 months on different strains. Uh, but we are uh, surveilling the, the, the positive uh, COVID samples that, that are coming through the state. Uh, and it, it's also important to note that uh, there, there is no evidence that this is uh, causes any difference in infective in, in any difference in severity of the infection. Uh, also, there's no evidence to support that this um, will have any difference on uh, the vaccines. So I think all of us can rest assured that uh, it's important that we continue to uh, work with. Uh, our healthcare providers and getting everyone vaccinated as soon as possible. Uh, additionally, I think uh, it's it's been hit pretty hard uh, by everybody on the call so far. But uh, the most important thing we can do uh, with this new strain is just continue to do the things that uh, we've 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 heard: uh, washing our hands, social distancing, wearing masks. Uh, you know, continuing with all of those important public health practices. And I think it, as long as we continue uh, working as we have been and continuing to be diligent and, and uh, you know, staying away from large gatherings, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to continue to dig our, our way out of, of the pandemic. And I think uh, that, that's about all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Now I'm going to hand it over to Captain Brian Johnson. He's with the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jim. Appreciate it. Appreciate the reports uh, here on uh, uh, live Facebook. Um, yeah, from the Navajo Area Indian Health Service, of course, I, I serve as the acting deputy area director for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. And um, we, we do provide uh, regular reports on this program as, as well as others. And I'll, I'll just provide a, a brief update today. Um, we, we definitely continue uh, to work with our, uh, our partners at the Navajo Nation uh, Health Command Operations Center, as well as with our tribal health organization partners. And I've always tried to uh, make sure that folks um, out there understand and are fully aware that uh, you know, the Navajo Area Indian Health Service is part of a greater healthcare system here on the Navajo Nation, which um, includes both uh, federal uh, healthcare facilities as well as tribally uh, authorized or tribal health organizations. So within the Navajo IHS, in terms of the federally operated facilities, uh, those include uh, Gallup, uh, Gallup Indian Medical Center, uh, Chinle, uh, Kayenta, Crown Point, and I'm forgetting one. Uh, but anyway, we have we have five uh, federal service units uh, that that we uh, continue to operate, and um, we we do make sure that we're working with our federal partners on a on a daily basis and sharing information 
important, uh, making sure that we're all thinking along the same uh, lines of, of communication. So um, I, I left out Shiprock earlier, so that uh, came back to my mind as uh, service unit number five. Um, so we, what we do know is we continue to monitor uh, hospital bed capacities within our health facilities. And this is not only happening within the, the federal health care facilities, but also within the, uh, the tribal uh, facilities as well. And we share that information uh, on, a, on a daily basis, if not every other day basis, just to make sure that we all have awareness of where we stand with this pandemic and, and how it's impacting our patients uh, here on the Navajo Nation and our, our community members. So we wanna make sure that we constantly are watching those uh, numbers to understand um, just um, you know how impactful it's being to our facilities. And if we're having to transfer patients uh, out to different locations, um, then, then we do so. But I just want to make sure everyone understands that we do have that awareness at a higher level. Um, we, we continue, no different than what's already been mentioned here on this call, we continue to encourage uh, individuals and families to definitely pr protect yourself and your, and your family members by continuing to follow the public health orders that are issued here on the Navajo Nation. Those orders do make an impact on the number of cases that we see. And uh, we've, we've been able to track that and, and monitor those uh, situations. And so please know that, that anything that you can do to help during this pandemic, you, we, we do have power in this pandemic to control the number of cases. So um, please follow those public health orders and uh, continue to social distance and follow those public health practices as has been shared here earlier. Um, you know, of course, the big uh, focus of attention at this point in this pandemic is, of course, the vaccine. And, and uh, we know that for the COVID-19 vaccine, there are two uh, manufacturers that have been, uh, uh, that received emergency use authorization, uh, both Pfizer and Moderna. And we've shared that on multiple occasions, that those are the two uh, types of vaccine that are the only approved at this time in terms of emergency use. And uh, there may be uh, future vaccines uh, coming as well but uh, those have not received emergency use authorization at this point for this particular pandemic. So um, for, the, for the two vaccines that, that we're talking about, and I'm sure this will probably be, be hit on a little bit uh, later in this uh, session by uh, Dr. Hammett and, um, and others, but really the vaccine, you know, vaccination is the safest and most effective and most reliable way to keep yourself, your family, and your community healthy and safe from COVID-19. Uh, so um, we make sure that we share that message uh, broadly because we want families and we want uh, everyone to understand that that is the you know, vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine is the most effective and most reliable way to, um, to make sure that we, we put, put a, uh, I guess an end to this pandemic we need everyone to understand um, more and more about the vaccine. Uh, there's, there's no reason why um, we shouldn't be you know, having conversations about the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine. We wanna make sure that everyone is being as transparent as possible. And we also know that um, the, the current vaccines are around the, in the area of 90% effective and, and, and have actually undergone a tremendous amount of uh, safety testing. So again, um, there's some information, misinformation that you may see out, uh, whether it be on the internet or you, you might hear other uh, in other venues. But I think it's um, one of the things I wanted to encourage the viewers and listeners uh, today is to make sure that when you're uh, hearing or receiving this information, that you're really getting that from a reputable source, um, whether that be your primary healthcare provider or whether that be, um, you know, if you're looking at a reputable site, um, perhaps it's John Hopkins on the internet or perhaps it's Mayo Clinic, um, you know, reputable sites that can, uh, you, you can have some confidence that the information being shared is accurate. Uh, there's just too much misinformation out there that can be misleading and it's unfair to consumers 
to um, have to try to sift through that. But unfortunately, that's what we have to do. I um, wanted just to mention real quick, just to give everyone a bird's eye view of, of if we talk about nationally within the Indian Health Service, um, the Indian Health Service at this point nationally has received uh, 290,900 COVID-19 vaccines. This was as of yesterday. So 290,900, just right under 300,000 uh, doses. And um, as, as President Nez mentioned earlier, um, you know, if, if you look across the, um, the United States and you look at local cities or um, uh, regions, oftentimes what you'll see are, um, although, you know, despite the fact that there's been uh, numerous uh, vaccines out there, in terms of actually administering those vaccines, providing shots to the population, the various populations, um, and oftentimes those um, the, the 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 percentage of administration is in the is in the range of thirty to thirty five percent. That's pretty common. Uh, we feel very fortunate in the Indian Health Service because there has been a robust uh, response to uh, the COVID nineteen vaccine. It's been monitored extremely closely with uh, many of our partners, and we do appreciate everyone that has contributed to this. And again, as President Nez had mentioned earlier, we're very fortunate because our percentage of uh, vaccine administration of the vaccine that we have received is at uh, 77 percent. And that can fluctuate a little bit. It can go up a little bit, down a little bit, but we're continuing to uh, monitor that. And as you can imagine, when new uh, or additional supplies of vaccine are received, um, that number again uh, will immediately, uh, the percentage will go down, but then we work, we'll work diligently to make sure we get that vaccine out and bring the number back up. So we're, we're wanting to keep that high percentage of vaccine administration as one of our objectives uh, in this pandemic. I uh, just also wanted to mention that, um, you know, Dr. Jim in her session had, had mentioned the uh, Navajo Nation COVID-19 vaccine prioritization. Uh, just to make sure that people have that awareness, <clears throat> this is something that we do work on together with the Navajo Nation. So whether, whether we're a federal healthcare facility within the Navajo uh, Nation healthcare system, or if it's a tribal health organization, um, we all are following the vaccine prioritization uh, schedule that uh, the Navajo Nation has uh, developed in, in partnership with many uh, individuals on this session, as well as out there possibly listening. And so um, we are thankful that we have those guiding principles in terms of uh, priorities and making sure that we're taking care of the population in a way that makes uh, the most sense. And so um, it's it's uh, pretty amazing that we've already exceeded you know uh, twenty thousand uh, twenty thousand three hundred uh, vaccinations here on the Navajo Nation. We're very proud of that number, and uh, we're looking to uh, if if we get more vaccine, uh, you can bet that we're all working diligently across the healthcare system to get uh, that vaccine out there to get it administered to make sure we're taking care of it appropriately. As we know that uh, Pfizer does have temperature um, criteria that we need to make sure that we keep in mind. And so we're, we're always looking out for the safety and making sure that we're handling that appropriately. So um, I'm, I'm just going to end here, but I, I just want to continue to stress that, again, with the public health orders, there is a reason for those uh, here on the Navajo Nation. And we do appreciate that leadership. Uh, to make sure that uh, we continue to protect the population on Navajo Nation as the best we can. And we thank everyone. We know it's been a, a very much a hardship. And, um, and, but, but it's, we're making progress. And uh, if we can just continue to be patient and continue to uh, comply with those public health orders, if we can continue to wash our hands, if we can continue to watch our distances in terms of social distancing, uh, staying, you know, trying to remain six feet from others, 
uh, while we're at the grocery store or other locations where we're required to be around others. And then also continue to wear our face masks. It's, it's just so, so critical. And believe me, I understand the term uh, pandemic fatigue. Uh, all of us are struggling with that. And, um, you know, I do recommend when folks can get out and, and take a step outside, maybe exercise uh, during the warmer part of these uh, winter days. I think that's a good stress reliever and it helps uh, get fresh air and get away from others and, and enjoy outdoor air. Um, I, I really do recommend that for folks. And uh, just keep in mind as well that while our cases were, were, were seeing some plateauing effect, we also know that we still have a large, large number of cases here on the Navajo Nation. So again, following those public health orders and following those principles of hand washing, uh, social distancing, and wearing your mask can continue to be critical. So with that said, I'm gonna um, turn it over to uh, Dr. Fowler, if she could possibly uh, help interpret. And then I think we would move on to Dr. Laura Hammett. Thank you, um, Mr. Captain Brian Johnson. Uh, Aloha shin sagadich o stoit ini, eta pikinanal kaigi ayego, ech et nahuis nanigi, e aj e de yu toj e sa um a nahat nihit trans ni ne, a ko eshi a shi e sa opetol na e petol na e bits ando ech ana a tani gishi, a quande, do e yego, a bahat zedi it eda, o o bahaton nehi it e a quande. Nal nal kahi gi di chostoit ini benahon na egi a variant strain, will ye? E ati nal kato, a jashi nal kande, nihid the nenoslini ashkonda a nihid nal beta ako no sendo beta ako ya yegon hilla kanta kis, nihid cheat on his ze bitni betata des bal and hit anas chiko nda kain hisne. Aro di Captain Brian Johnson in the Navy Navajo Area Office Station. Ninja Aja is the Embassy has an excellent day. Not only than Lenny, A D is the Embassy has angodi ni hit the Navajo hotel. So because a at the general he stay ni niche aro di ke nahal kay da a da to yego pa si si stay nish to benta huit ani to ala lunch ni hit the Napansi kasi at the อันจนเอ่อที่ได้เนี่ยจะเอ่อเอ็นเดอร์เอ่อเอ่อเอ็มเบสนะฮะสังกออันนี่ชิฮาชินสกอเอ่อเป็นเจ้าพ่อฮั
auto dit as in a appointment gold kana so so lot a dan a quantity dik at a baho a gays twido sani elderly campaign is na a ben na j a on his twido sani lini but a si oko osh teacher ha or tsiki ben na just like you go touch the rato and sa ho ma de so taro on hit cheat on his there are but that that is baldo on hit cut nash chico oh we no sin Ako e kwa tsa sa ba tsa na ho shi na do le ka che ya ta tsa he me pe tsa ho na na shi le do le a ji shi e wanda o li a ji shi to sa ba tsa ha na do le ako ta tsa he me You may have to unmute yourself Dr. tsa he me Thank you Dr. Fowler yeah, I did been a she a Laura Hammett in a she the Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health by Nish Nish. I direct the infectious disease prevention programs at the Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health. Um, and I'm joined today by a couple of members of my team, uh, uh, Nay Gorman and Wanda Lefebvre. And we're I'm really grateful for the opportunity to to join the town hall this morning to talk about COVID-19 uh, vaccines. I'll uh, pass it over to uh, Nay and Wanda to introduce themselves, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Laura Hammett. Hello, my name is Nay Nikhil Gorman. I am a research program assistant with the Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health. And I can pass it to Wanda to introduce herself. Good morning. My name is Wanda Lafayette. I work with Johns Hopkins and I've been working with them for close to 30 years as a research program assistant too. Thank you. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, start uh, with an overview uh, that will be presented by Nay. Thank you, Laura. So on this slide is an overview of COVID-19. COVID-19 is the disease caused by the novel coronavirus known as SARS-CoV-2. Symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, cough, trouble breathing, sometimes aches, pains, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, diarrhea, tiredness, loss of taste or smell. COVID-19 spreads from one person to another through respiratory droplets, like coughing or surfaces contaminated with droplets. People with mild or no symptoms can still be infectious. Next slide, please. This is a dashboard from Johns Hopkins that tracks data worldwide. Globally, there are over 92 million cases and nearly 2 million deaths due to COVID-19. Next slide, please. This is a map that shows positive cases across the IHS service areas. Native country has been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. On the left is a map of Navajo Nation. There is 25,576 positive cases of COVID-19. The total negative tests is 174,684 and 874 total confirmed deaths. Next slide. Given how profoundly COVID-19 has impacted Navajo Nation, as well as the entire world, a vaccine is critically important to protect our communities. So what could a COVID-19 vaccine do? It will benefit the individual, reduce the severity of illness, prevent infection, benefit the community, reduce transmission, and create healthier communities. Next slide, please. So how does vaccination stop transmission? Without transmission, the spread of COVID-19 in the community is not contained. This is a new virus, so no one has immunity and it can spread quickly. This is what you see in the picture on the left. With vaccination, people become immune and the spread of COVID-19 in the community is contained. This is what you see in the picture on the right. Even if one person gets sick, transmission is not widespread because people have been vaccinated. The more people that vaccinate, protect these will be. 
pass it on to him to the next level. to recognize and fight invaders. Uh, vaccines uh, stimulate the body's immune system um, to make antibodies, which are germ-fighting cells that help to prevent disease. When we're talking about SARS-CoV-2 or the virus that causes COVID-19, you might be wondering what that looks like. And here's an image of the virus. Um, that you can see the spike proteins that go all the way around it. Um, those spike proteins cover the surface of the virus and are what give it its name, uh, coronavirus. In the um, box is one spike protein, and scientists have been able to map the structure of that spike protein, which is shown on the right. The spike is the piece of the, uh, of the protein that's on the surface of the coronavirus that directs how the virus will attach to cells in people. That's what starts the infectious process. So you can see on the left-hand side of the slide an image of a coronavirus with the spike protein um, uh, protruding from the surface of the virus. That spike protein um, moves towards the human cells, and you can see the receptor cell on the surface of a human cell there. Um, the receptor acts like a lock, and the spike protein is like the key that will fit into that lock, and that's what allows the virus to enter the cell. So when we talk about pieces of the virus that have been copied to make vaccines, we're talking about this spike protein here. The goal of vaccination is um, to stimulate the body to make antibodies. And you can see here in this slide, the antibodies are colored in green and they are shaped like the letter Y and they use the top of their arms to attach to the spike protein. So the antibodies bind to the spike protein and they block it from being able to access uh, the receptor on the human cells. And that's what prevents infection. So we make those antibodies, they bind to the spike protein and prevent that coronavirus from being able to enter human cells. There are a number of vaccines. When the pandemic first started, um, a, over a year ago now, uh, many different uh, companies and universities uh, work, went to work very quickly, uh, acknowledging that this was going to be a major problem uh, because no one has immunity. <laughs> As Nay said, nobody, this is a brand new virus and nobody had immunity to this virus. So um, it was going to be very important to find a vaccine in order to protect the populations um, from, from this virus. So there were many vaccines that went into development and you can see a summary of where we are now at this point, as of this week, um, there are 43 vaccines that are actually still in phase one clinical trials. That's the very first phase of clinical trials. 21 that have moved on to phase two clinical trials uh, that are expanded trials, 20 that are in phase three, eight that are in, uh, early or limited use in countries outside of the United States, 
two vaccines, and those are the two that are used, the Pfizer and, and the Moderna vaccine that are used here on Navajo Nation, are approved for full use. Um, and then one that so far has not made it through the process um, at all. So I want people to understand um, the very extensive process that all products go through before they're authorized or, or approved for use. Um, and so this slide shows the stages of the clinical trials. Normally we have phase one where we do those very small uh, safety studies, usually involving less than 100 people. And then those data are analyzed and the company makes a decision whether or not to move on to phase two, uh, which usually involve a few hundred to a few thousand people. And then those data are analyzed and the company makes preparations if everything looks good to go on to phase three, um, where we're really answering that question, does this product prevent infections or help to reduce uh, the severity of disease? And these studies involve thousands of people. With, with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, vaccines, it's important to know that none of the steps are being skipped. We just changed the structure of how the work is done so that some steps could be done in parallel instead of one after another. And we're overlapping the phases so that as soon as we have the necessary safety data collected and analyzed, a decision can be made um, about whether to move on to the next phase. There was a tremendous investment of resources um, around the world to make sure that this process could happen as efficiently as possible, recognizing uh, the tremendous need that we had to find a way out of this pandemic. And as these vaccine trials became publicized um, and, and the first, you know, early stages of clinical trials began in the spring, um, that was a time that, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the teams on Navajo Nation were working really hard doing uh, testing clinics, making sure that people had uh, food and water and could safely isolate or quarantine. Um, and it was really during this time, you know, w when we were out in the community that we um, heard from community members questions about whether these vaccine trials that they were seeing in the news might be something that could be available on uh, Navajo Nation. And the decision to, to move forward with submitting this protocol to the Navajo Nation Human Research Review Board was made following input and guidance from community members, elders, healthcare providers, and members of the leadership team at the Navajo Nation uh, COVID-19 Health Command Operations Center. There are many considerations for whether or not, you know, to participate, um, for Navajo Nation in particular, to participate in a COVID-19 uh, clinical trial. And some of those are listed here. Um, being able to be part of the clinical trial provides um, a foundation for uh, promoting health equity. It ensures that the products that are licensed and recommended for use nationally have evidence for use locally. And importantly, diversity was a goal of these vaccine clinical trials so that public health authorities could ensure that authorized vaccines were safe and effective for all Americans, especially those experiencing the highest rates of disease. And this really can provide found the foundation for equitable access um, and for confidence in the vaccines. But we also have to recognize um, that tribal communities need to be cautious about research given uh, past harms that have been experienced um, and to listen to those concerns um, about potential for uh, coercion or unethical practices. And it's really the decision on Navajo Nation. Um, all research must be reviewed and approved uh, by the Navajo Nation Human Research Review Board, who reviews all research protocols to ensure that they will be ethically and safely conducted, um, that there will be potential benefit to participants or to the community, um, that the uh, procedures are non-coercive, um, and that it complies with Navajo Nation uh, policies, uh, specifically around um, 
testing of specimens um, and making sure that there, there is compliance with, um, with the moratorium against uh, genetic testing. No research on Navajo Nation can involve any human uh, genetic testing. And so with the input of, of many people, um, the decision was made to submit the protocol to the Human Research Review Board on Navajo Nation, um, who reviewed it and uh, approved that study to, to be offered to people here on Navajo Nation. I'm going to pause right now before we switch over to uh, invite Wanda to describe the study and ask Dr. Fowler um, if you'd like to do a translation up to this point. We can go ahead and have Wanda um, continue. Sounds great. Thank you, Dr. Fowler. Uh, Wanda, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in this slide, in this slide it, shows it shows COVID-19 Pfizer biotech vaccine trial study design and activities. This was voluntary participation with adults who are healthy or have stable underlying conditions. Following informed consent, participants were randomly assigned to receive either the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine or the placebo. And they got two doses and they're followed with six appointments over two years and they check in with us with electronic diary on a weekly basis. The study is being done at Chinle, Gallup, Shiprock, White River, plus over 140 sites globally in five countries. The Kwaigie Adnik Echebahash Netgoli, the Azeitnan Kahigi Bishnish, so Bishnashit Nish. Okodi Abi Bit Patahan Neho E Yahaye and Yahada Ila Ahuyani Tapit at the Toya which it benahaigi to the Tata Kosan Sinas eight at the Atobet Nehegi, Koti Nad Sos A bit is Jar Dani Zeno Kut out a yin Yahada Ila Okoti Zeki A Bait Bad that seats at all are on the uh Jokosibo is the can you guys still hear me? We can, and the echo is better. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And then if we could go on to the next slide. Um, in this slide, it shows COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine trial enrollment on the Navajo Nation and White Mount Apache tribe. Um, there are currently 277 people who volunteered for the trial at the Hopkins site with 82% of the um, participants were Native American, but non-Native American participants were uh, primarily IHS employees. A slight majority of the participants were female and there was good representation across the adult age group. Next slide, please. Um, in this slide, um, shows a summary of Pfizer clinical trial results regarding efficacy. After two doses, 
um, the vaccine was 95% effective at preventing COVID-19. This graph shows that vaccine is very effective at protecting people against COVID-19. The yellow line represents people who got a placebo. As you can see, the rate of COVID-19 goes up for this group over time, even with usual precautions of mask wearing and social distancing. The purple line shows people who received the Pfizer vaccine. And as you can see, the rate of COVID-19 barely goes up over time, showing that they are protected. After two doses, the vaccine, like I said, is 95% effective at protecting against COVID-19. Um, placebo to a the was a gibble tata a agible bad that seed see gay honey la goshi a yahadi the cos and sign last it's at the hape die day snap. Our own the tahu yakona at zoig it's at the day a a yahe um a zagi babel bad that's see. Oko aji gay a it's easy chana pahagi bay the hollow gosh a ajabe bahalia oko. The Atla Beso is Kashi gain us at Dino are a slut big ago a yahe ajits easy chana bahagi pay the hollow. Next slide, please. In this slide, um, it shows a summary of Pfizer clinical trial results regarding safety. Side effects were generally mild and went away after one to two days. The most common side effects included pain where the shot was given. Um, there was some tiredness, muscle aches, chills, headache, and fever. The only severe solicited adverse events that were reported by more than 2% of vaccine recipients were fatigue after the first or second dose, headache following the second dose, Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency usage authorization on December 11th of 2020. Um, Jodi a gun, Hogan, a hypit, a zagibit bad that it's a codiba that's tea, a sheep, it's auto a begun at Isoya that the nito, it's auto a ayuch et that is kato, but tota a that the nito at seats in the nito at bits auto to arts iso that kid. O cocody, um, FDA, Joe a adet not sauce a bay hot cash deed. Uh, December is the year that that's at the Hoyo Castle to a Aja Abe with bad dusts, with bad that seho, a baby Hahol Jeej. And now I will turn this back over to Dr. Laura Hammond. Thank you, Wanda. Um, and I really appreciate um, our team coming together today to help pre present the results of these uh, trials. Both Wanda and they um, have participated in these trials on the team, recruiting um, for recruiting participants, going through the informed consent process, um, and carrying out all of the study activities. And it's, uh, I think, been very powerful experience for all of us to see um, how tremendously effective these vaccines are. I want to show you the data um, for the Moderna trial, which is very similar to what you just saw from uh, Wanda's presentation on the Pfizer trial results. So both of these vaccines use an mRNA platform. They're very similar vaccines. Um, in this study, there were 30,000 uh, participants and they found 94% uh, efficacy against COVID-19 without I, no serious safety concerns were identified. And like the Pfizer vaccine, um, people will uh, oftentimes have mild to moderate temporary side effects that include pain where the shot's given, tiredness, joint pain, headache, um, and some redness at the injection site. Um, sometimes also some swollen lymph nodes under the, under the arm on the side where the shot was given. Um, so for this uh, vaccine, the FDA issued an emergency use authorization uh, in December. And both of these vaccines are, of course, now available um, on Navajo Nation. And we've seen, um, you guys have seen, Dr. Uh, President Nez has taken us um, live to several of the vaccine uh, rollout events. Shown a picture here of uh, one of the events in Shiprock last week. 
Um, and Dr. Jim showed you it's really wonderful that uh, the Department of Health is being very transparent about these vaccines, exactly how many have been received and how many have been administered. Um, and as you have seen, you know, Navajo Nation is doing a better job at getting vaccines out to people than just about anywhere in the country. So huge congratulations and, and thanks really to all of the teams um, who are working so hard to make this available and to all of the people who are recognizing the importance of, of the vaccines and um, coming in to get vaccinated. As has been uh, mentioned previously, Navajo Nation is only using COVID-19 vaccines that have been approved by the FDA under an emergency use authorization. Um, both of the doses or both of the vaccines that are currently available require two doses per person um, separated uh, by 21 days for the Pfizer vaccine or by 28 days for the Moderna vaccine and both shots must be taken to be effective. Navajo Nation, as you've also heard this morning, is vaccinating priority populations uh, before vaccinating uh, the general public. Um, and uh, questions come up um, in, in other town hall presentations um, about whether this is voluntary. And, and indeed, it is voluntary. It is you know, people's choice whether or not to get this vaccine. Um, but as Dr. Jim, President Nez, Captain Johnson, you know, as everybody on today's call has emphasized, this is an important way to protect yourself um, and, and your community. Dr. Jim showed another slide um, that summarized the phases of distribution, and I know there have been some questions about that. So we are currently in phase 1B, um, which you can see there. It's expected um, that we'll move, uh, you know, over the next month or two through all of the phase 1B uh, individuals. And then in the spring, um, move into uh, phase two of rollout, uh, which will make vaccines available to the general population. But it's really important to first vaccinate those people who are at highest risk. Um, we know uh, that this, you know, we wish we could get vaccine out instantaneously to everybody, um, but we uh, appreciate everybody's patience uh, with getting this rolled out um, and uh, you know, doing everything that you can to contact and contact your local um, IHS clinic or tribal health organization clinic and uh, schedule uh, those vaccines. I want to spend some time now on um, some frequently asked questions. Um, before we transition to that, uh, Dr. Fowler, do you want to do any um, summary of any of the other material that's been covered? Yes, uh, I can, Dr. Hammett. Yeah, I'm not educator, should I? Could I say to us, I know how to 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 know a Kashin Sakoti on Hikaya for Kai Kon Naska, a Koti Arjun of Archin and it's a Kaji Kate and Lenny Yen Dashnish, Ado Zail, and it and Lenny Ape, Shatosh Shato Bess, it's decent old Kano, um, Yelanda Isli, a con Nakidneza Dino Artus, it of Dino Artus, it of Conella, a Kashin Sako, it's a Yen Dashnish, Dobbin Natchep, it's decent Lenny Ben Daska. I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't know Nescado ado materna, well, yeni, a co idi, haj haige, yis and noskaige, dich in libel has anger how, doja ado, nan George, ado nat ani nes, ado hashin to go slash, you go eighteen, the askaido, doshi, asa, and a kid eight in the hashin to go deeds of cage cane, lini, his and dash nish, ado yakonizi is a desh niniki. 
Ado di ado na at ka ape se de a di le a ka na z na lebes na z ado z na lebes na z ango ado di um a the nebi ke ya ado talate na tani dan leni na wo nation jo a j e ha shin tsaga i r p di na a j o papi ke na at a ho nta e na at ka e da at e be lata az le ado e trial leni is jahin do al ka leni e ho ta na Benda has tado Italia, and she kedo shit na eko eti, kat eze in lini, and he kan ka ipe ata atsiki, ek ape da inish eko. Ba ahe ni tzendo ahe he ha jin so kodo ni ka o wado na as ka eki, kat bich et na hodo al jish eti ha jin no flanche a ni na atikit na ni ke holondo o yu in hi che ente yi la, e she in kodo ba na huil na do le, na ati kiti gi kasin sa kasin sa oya bichet ni ni tlanti isa na kato kasje e kato yan na hal na dole frequent ask question go ahead and get back to you Dr Hammett thank you thank you Dr Fowler so we'll go through a number of questions that have come through on the chat as well as other questions that we've heard in other uh, town hall conversations. So the first one is, will there be other COVID-19 vaccines available? And the answer to that question is that we expect that there will be depending on the clinical trial results and FDA approval. So as we mentioned, all of these, before they're given authorization by the FDA have to have gone through um, rigorous evaluation to make sure that they are both safe and effective. The first two vaccines that are listed in this table are the Moderna and the Pfizer BioNTech vaccines that we've been talking about that have that emergency use authorization at this point. There are other studies that are in late stage uh, trials and phase three clinical trials uh, that we expect to have data on uh, in the coming months and those data will be reviewed by the FDA and um, I expect that some of those vaccines will also be given an emergency use authorization, and that will add to our ability to, you know, provide more safe and effective vaccines uh, for the population. Some people have questioned, you know, saying that they don't usually get the flu vaccine, so why would they want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? And, and the answer to that is really shown in these graphics here. COVID-19 uh, causes much more severe disease compared to influenza. Both vaccines are important, um, but just because you, you, know, you don't normally get the flu vaccine doesn't mean you, you shouldn't get the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, on the left-hand side of the slide, you can see the hospitalization rate. 19% of people with COVID-19 uh, will end up in the hospital. That's nearly one in five people um, end up needing to be hospitalized compared to only 2% of people with influenza that need to be in the hospital. When people do get hospitalized with COVID-19, the, the average length of the hospital stay is 12 days compared to people who are hospitalized with influenza only being in the, needing to be in the hospital for an average of four days. Uh, the case fatality rate for COVID-19 is also um, much higher than it is for influenza. Um, and, and this vaccine is really one of the best defenses um, that we have in preventing not only COVID-19 cases, but also COVID-19 deaths, particularly in, in elders and high-risk uh, individuals. Some people have asked whether COVID um, vaccines can cause someone uh, to get COVID-19 infection or uh, to test positive. And the answer to that is no. These vaccines are made from synthetic or, or laboratory-made pieces that are copied from uh, SARS-CoV-2, not the whole virus. If you think about, um, you know, if you see, see a tire or a steering wheel, you might think of a truck, but you can't drive with just a tire or just a steering wheel. Um, likewise, if you took apart a mobile phone and just had the SIM card, you couldn't use that um, phone to make a call or to send a text message. It wouldn't work because those are only pieces. And so in the same way, when you only have pieces copied from the virus, there's no way that those pieces can come together to create the real 
uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. And this is why we can say with confidence that the vaccines cannot give you an infection um, or cause COVID-19 illness or cause you to test positive. Um, that's not to say that they can't you know, cause side effects. Many people will have temporary mild to moderate side effects um, that you know, make them feel un unwell for a couple of days. Um, but these vaccines cannot cause someone to become sick with COVID-19. When the vaccines were rolled out initially, people will remember the media reports of individuals experiencing severe allergic reactions um, known as anaphylaxis. And so people have had a lot of questions about if there's a history of allergic reactions, whether they can um, get the vaccine themselves. It is safe for people with seasonal pet or food allergies to get the vaccine. Um, anaphylactic re reactions have rarely been reported following vaccine, uh, mRNA vaccines. Um, these have occurred in approximately six cases per million doses of vaccine given. So these are very rare. People who have a history of anaphylaxis other than two vaccines um, or injectable uh, therapy can still receive the COVID-19 vaccine in a clinic setting. This is something they should discuss with their provider, um, but they would just uh, be monitored. Most of the time we monitor after the vaccination for 15 minutes. If there's a, an individual has a history of anaphylaxis, then they're monitored for 30 minutes after the vaccine is given. The only people who should not receive the mRNA vaccine on the basis of a history of allergic reactions is if somebody's had a severe allergic reaction after a previous dose of an mRNA COVID vaccine or has had an allergic reaction to any of its components, um, or if they've had an immediate allergic reaction of any severity to a previous dose of an mRNA uh, COVID vaccine. Um, or if they've had an immediate allergic reaction uh, to polysorbate because it may cross, that may cross react with the uh, polyethylene glycol that is a, a stabilizer in the COVID-19 vaccine. So the bottom line is that this vaccine is safe for people with seasonal pet or food allergies. Um, if you're somebody that has more serious allergic reactions and you carry an EpiPen for those, you should discuss that um, with your provider. Uh, but even in those cases, uh, that is not a contraindication to being vaccinated. We heard from um, we, we heard from Dr. Edwards earlier about the strain variant that's been detected in New Mexico. And there have been questions about whether the vaccine will be effective for all of the COVID strains that are circulating. And as you heard from Dr. Edwards, the available data suggests that the vaccines will work against the variants uh, that are currently circulating. Uh, we do not think it's going to be necessary to reformulate the COVID-19 vaccines each year, like we do for the influenza vaccines, um, but this is being monitored. And one of the advantages of the mRNA vaccines is that they can be modified more easily if there is a need in the future to, to do that. We've also had people ask, you know, why not take my chances with COVID-19 um, rather than getting the vaccine? And I think it's fair to say, and everybody on this call would agree that COVID-19 is by far the more dangerous option. Although people who are older or overweight or have other health problems are at the highest risk for complications from COVID-19, even young people can become severely ill. And as many as uh, one third or one in three people who have had COVID and then recover um, actually still have chronic symptoms, including tiredness, um, heart problems, uh, breathing problems, and, and those can last for months. Um, in contrast, COVID vaccines carry little known risks. So it's really strongly recommended to take the opportunity um, when you have it to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Some people have asked about whether a, a, mRNA vaccines can change a person's genes at all. And the answer to that is no, mRNA isn't the same as DNA and it can't combine with our DNA to change our genetic code. 
the mRNA in these vaccines um, stays in a part of the cell that isn't even near where the DNA is. And it's also very fragile. Um, it has to be encased in a lipid coating so that it can be taken up by our cells. Um, and once it's taken up, it only hangs around inside the cells for at most uh, three days before it's degraded while it's being uh, translated into that and in, into the uh, spike proteins to make antibodies. We have two vaccines here on Navajo Nation, and people have asked whether you know it's possible to choose which vaccine they want to get. Um, I'll reiterate that Navajo Nation only uses COVID-19 vaccines that the FDA has authorized as safe and effective. Um, vaccine supply is very limited and therefore choice is limited. And a lot of what determines which is uh, being offered is you know, what, what's in uh, stock supply wise and also where the vaccination events are taking place um, because of the different storage requirements for the two different vaccines. We've had questions about uh, people who've had COVID and have recovered and if they still need to get a COVID-19 vaccine. And the answer is yes, COVID-19 vaccines should be offered um, to all eligible people, regardless of whether they've had COVID-19 in the past. Uh, people who have had COVID-19 infection um, should obviously wait until their isolation period is over uh, before traveling to clinics. Um, for vaccination, but it's also known that they will have immunity. They will be protected uh, for a period of time. And, and the CDC states that people who've had COVID-19 infection can defer their vaccine until 90 days after their infection was diagnosed. There is, um, as you might have detected in the results slides that Wanda presented, um, there does appear to be some uh, degree of protection uh, starting around two weeks after the first dose. But a person is, but that's only around, you know, 40 to 50% protection. A person is not considered fully protected until one week following the second dose. And I know the notion of pandemic fatigue is something that we can all identify with. And, and many people have asked, you know, after I've gotten my vaccine, can I stop wearing a mask? Can I be around my family safely? But the answer is um, you still need to wear masks and practice social distancing because uh, we, we need to do this until, you know, the large majority of our community has been protected with COVID-19 vaccine and until the COVID-19 rates in our community are low. Getting a COVID-19 vaccine, as you saw, you know, provides 95% protection against COVID-19 disease, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we might not be able to transmit it to others. If we've been exposed, we'll be protected from getting disease, but we may still be able to, um, to transmit it. So, we do need to continue to wear masks and practice social distancing even after we've uh, received a vaccine. And another question has come up about, you know, if somebody has been vaccinated and they get sick with COVID-19 symptoms, um, do they still need to get tested for COVID-19? And the answer to that is yes, the vaccine works very well, but it's not 100% effective. Um, and if people have COVID-19 symptoms, then they should please get tested as soon as possible because that's really important uh, way for us to be able to slow the spread of the virus. Um, there's one other question that I saw that came through on um, the chat that I wanted to address, which is, you know, for people who have been exposed um, and isolated, uh, are they recommended to get the vaccine or wait a certain amount of time? So if somebody's in quarantine, then they should, because of an exposure, then they could, should complete their 14-day quarantine period um, before coming out to get vaccinated. Uh, if somebody is in isolation because they've actually had COVID-19 illness, they need to complete their isolation period. But in addition to that, because of having had the illness, they'll have antibodies and protection for a period of time and they can delay getting vaccinated for um, 90 days after, until 90 days after their infection. 
there's another question about whether if a person had COVID and had pneumonia from COVID, can they get the vaccine while they still have pneumonia? Um, COVID can cause lingering uh, respiratory symptoms. Uh, people can be vaccinated as long as they're, they've completed their isolation period. But uh, again, if somebody's had that infection, they, they are able to delay or defer vaccination for up to 90 days uh, until after that infection if they, if they choose because they should have that protection. And that's what IHS is recommending for most people is that if you've had COVID-19 infection, you can wait for 90 days before getting your vaccine. All right, well, I will, um, with that, uh, turn the time back over to the team, say, hey, I really appreciate the opportunity um, to be with everyone this morning and uh, we'll work with uh, Dr. Jim uh, and Dr. Fowler and, and the president, and vice president's office to make sure uh, that we continue to provide uh, support and answer the, uh, to, for these frequently asked questions. Dr. Hammett, thank you to you and your team. And yat and nana shikido should ne kodo ain batos kit kashino sla a con he as a in the don't as kan leni kodo yen hich and hantasi et sahiki a ya di the kosin tai halane la e is a um clash bana hot lord or hot on need ado in no a ya. Nasco net nitishin sa as a in pana hot lord or let a conde to a ten nadol kato nadanol in hashin zago naska or aya ad on lake kinahal kedodo a yisa is el emishnahas ado ado bikini ita and a ya is a e bella nasty on the ananal ito hane ado na kone na tikidigi. The flu vaccine, a ya hashinella, the ashani, um, should not should the dot need Lenny Holla or Quande Joe had needed season Lenny art art a dog quande D as a death no Lenniki, a hashin so did the cost and sign Lenny hit on a pahi, hit on a pahi benina, a ben hat at his ne. I don't know, not a kidigi, a yadi infection is nini, a hashin sagodi, um, the cousin sa, nas it's a dapa de nido, hashin sagosacha, um, it's east chostoit ini hahan, tosh, a di satobe, a nat or tsihi, a be la, do not ne eda a sato e is a in and lini, a yisapas la hala, a it's east and lini. Yeah, yeah, and need all us are neat and hits the seed to a side or that the donny, side not the donny. Ado deep, um, not the kiddiki a yardy, uh, hashin sabaha ishi is that the hahal in a shutter, us are neat addition. Hashin eat eshi eighteen hits easily baha aja. Ado tia that the neither do de chiyan than lenny. Ah, Hashit Eshi Nihijo Slado has added Ahota, a hint in the Okoti alert. If I have allergic reaction, they sne, ah, the cousin Lini bits are now Bahigi, Beha or Tsekojo, a teach a yan, ah, Sahajo Slago, the DJ Cha and Masada, though, but he didn't like a big, a quiet. Is there in Lenica a cargo a shut up at the door? Need a conde in this year, which in a hotel is a hashit a shins a day tango a a a a a dot that an a she is a is in a aja a banana slap. A roti is a da can Leniki d a need a cotto doctor Edwards Yahoo net or bat which nay the covet strain this ne. The age a ya hashin sago bedesne, jodich or stoitini, arjit and sakoje, um, your torje, ranana, sneak the shininki, a bedetos neat and a conde at the atina. I could ne a ya, a de 
Aro <laughs> Chichitos ze shata de spaldo lesto de asa as you go shaho a cotane. A conde nichito ne ze e a quichenta de spalo nan nato um nan nishkota as nanta ha aden chiton ze pini ata de spahalati atinas ni shikedo shedene do ye go beta a was yan his ne. Aro di ze nlini. Sha a cargo, a a sata sha a cargo, a do the cousin to Trahoni Gredo, Nashit as Cato, the cousin sign the door, Nashit or Nigo, the Ashe a co and Nashit at all car, a da nini a o nand at all car, Hala a the cousin sign door, Naidi, um, Argy is the eight in the Ape Banana Slado, the Ashe Nadane. Yego, um, Nihit's easy ain't a neat as she edo should the neck or a bar or nothing, a not a hot yan hit in. Ado has jean to go din hick aid and lini, but now so tanny that bedold not go. Though they sat the yen hit, um, bedold nine hit ya, ya go j a d d d at that j a quarantine dish ne. Ah, what is a star or do dungeon nista? A co e hut a peso yago, a condo is el ego ya o yago, though is el ego ya o yago, e at the andle, tartum, uh, tartum des, tartum des, don't lay nas at the jit, jar, ah, the end, naha, ah, is a linigi, naha, a dolly, ado di the cousin tigi. Um, that bedos now. Ado up a large at the cousin side. Ajo a pneumonia, this ne. Ado a hot up bedos now. Sha. Ash a a cotty is a eat up a hot old me. Jo a non kitchen is a eat in a lineage a arch yego yet a ne. A co a arch at the donny. Ain't the last eighteen. Ah, yes, can't your arch and the eight. Ha <laughs> Ado Hashin Sagoni is a ink in a door is that ne cards a lot so that on ne. But I hear no send or a he had but on ne. Ado Niche old lot that they need lately had hardly done or sunny door in the house. Lahi door not so that they know. I hear Nikito Sato that 
Ako <laughs> Eta il eneta, jono entato, nilko, what ego to nahuito, a hiki benina. Jo an he eat and to hashine la pez ani, to be kawinil ida. Ado hashine la e pez ani, katadel o be kawinil, eh ako an he eat e a conte. Yat e hoshi e nane katole, nasko ne, ne joko kwe e ya. And I say thank you to all our providers, our frontline workers, our leaders. I know there's so much that we're learning from this pandemic, but together we will overcome this pandemic, continue to wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands. We're going to continue saying that and talking about that every day. So protect yourself. Thank you for all your prayers. Let's continue to pray for one another and we will all overcome this together. Thank you for tuning in and appreciate